To you, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Amos. This is what the, he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line and with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a, the with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away from the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son. I am, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost is Psalm 85, verses 7 through 13, found on page 708 of the Book of Common Prayer and in your service leaflet. Please read responsively by whole verse. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God has said, for he is speaking peace to the disabled people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, and his glory may dwell in our land. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. 
With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who are the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked by the, with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus called the twelve to him and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority under, over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to not to put on two tunics. He said to them, 
wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Gunnery Sergeant Tim Johnson was a drill instructor in the United States Marine Corps. And he retired, he accepted a teaching position in an inner city high school in Chicago, a very tough high school. Uh, well, unfortunately, very shortly uh, before school was to begin, Sergeant Johnson suffered a very serious back injury. So he had a plaster cast from his shoulders all the way down to his waist. And uh, fortunately, his shirt covered that up. So he was able to go ahead and, and begin teaching, although he, he walked a little bit stiffly. So um, on the first day of school, Sergeant Johnson was assigned to the toughest class in the school. It was made up of students who were disciplinary problems. Well, the students had heard that their teacher was a former Marine, so they were anxious to see how tough this guy really was. So Sergeant Johnson entered the classroom with this hearty, good morning. Absolutely no response. There was dead silence, just these stares of contempt and indifference. Well, Sergeant Johnson walked over and opened a window to let some fresh air in. And this, the wind, a strong breeze came in and made his tie start flapping. So he calmly walked over to his desk and picked up a stapler and stapled his tie <laughs> to his chest. And, and guess what? There weren't any discipline problems in Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Johnson's class that year. So this staple gave Sergeant Johnson some, some credibility. It was a sign. It was a sign that these students were entering a new world. And that's what's happening in our gospel reading this morning. Jesus called the twelve, began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over unclean spirits. And Jesus was establishing his credibility. After all, who but God could grant authority over unclean spirits. And also, these exorcisms were not only a way to heal troubled souls, but they were a sign, a sign that God's kingdom was finally breaking in. Well, at the beginning of his ministry in Mark chapter 1, Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. It was time to spread that good news, and there was no time to waste. Well, Jesus had earlier recruited the 12 known as apostles. They were a motley crew, and Jesus didn't go to the seminary in Jerusalem to recruit them. He didn't need PhDs. He was looking for men with a heart for mission, men that he could train, men who were tough, men who were faithful. And there were fishermen. Two were nicknamed Sons of Thunder. There was a tax collector, a revolutionary, and a thief. And Jesus had been training them. He'd been training these apostles. And they had seen him calm the storm, perform exorcisms, heal the sick, even raise the dead. They'd heard him preach. They heard him teach in parables. So these apostles were ready to go, and wisely, Jesus sent them out in pairs, two by two. And you know, partners give each other strength and protection and companionship. Partners hold each other accountable. By going out in twos, they're less likely to go off the rails. This is probably why you see these young Mormons. I, I, I know you've seen them. 
with a white shirt and tie, sometimes riding bicycles. They're always in pairs, two by two. And the packing list, the packing list that Jesus gave the apostles, very short, it reflected the urgency of the mission. They had less than three years to let the people of Israel know that the Son of God had arrived. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. And this was in contrast to the religious leaders of the day, the Sadducees, the rich Sadducees, who would ride into a village, elaborately dressed, surrounded by an entourage of servants. So these minimal trappings of the apostles uh, indicated a serious focus on their mission. And there wasn't time to make prior arrangements for lodging. So as the apostles traveled the countryside, they depended on local hospitality. And Jesus knew that in some places, they wouldn't get a warm welcome. In fact, in some places, they would be outright rejected. And they didn't have time. They didn't have time to deal with those whose hearts were stone cold and were unwilling to even entertain the thought of repentance. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So shaking off the dust was a Jewish ceremonial act. It was an act of cleansing as a Jew left Gentile territory. They would shake the dust off their feet. So Jesus was telling the twelve that if a household rejected them, treat them as if they were Gentiles. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. So on the path to the cross, the twelve were moving quickly through Israel as representatives of the Messiah, driving out evil, healing the sick. And it was really this casting out of the demons that distinguished them from the other itinerant preachers. It was the sign the sign that God's kingdom was here at last. They were gathering support for the Jesus movement. They were spreading the good news so that people could repent. And they were preparing for that great evangelistic enterprise that would develop after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. So what's that mean for us? What does that mean for us today, sitting comfortably at Christ Church in Tyler, Texas? Well, Jesus' time on this earth was in a very different time and culture. So I don't think that we're intended to follow Jesus' instructions to the T. Uh, But we can't set these instructions completely aside. Because in some parts of the world, evangelism still operates on these principles, on these first century evangelistic principles that Jesus gave the Twelve. Several years ago, my wife Ann and I visited India. And I met with a group of Indian missionaries there who were spreading the good news in a culture that's very, very different from ours. And as these missionaries went into the Hindu and Muslim villages, uh, it was so dangerous that they left their children behind at a Christian boarding school. They raised their own support and took very few personal possessions with them. And, And they said, it's interesting, their most effective evangelistic technique with signs and wonders, miracles, exorcisms, very much like the apostles in our reading today. But there's no doubt in my mind that we're called, as we're the apostles, we're called to spread the good news. And now I want to turn to our Old Testament reading from the book of Amos. There's a verse here, I think that's related to our gospel reading this morning. Amaziah, the priest, told Amos to go to Judah and prophesy. And here's Amos' response. I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I'm a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. As a prophet, Amos was being summoned to speak on behalf of the Lord. And we're all called, every one of us, all baptized people are called to speak on behalf of the Lord. But our response is often like the response Amos gave. I'm no priest. I'm not a preacher. 
I'm a lawyer. I'm an insurance salesman. I'm a physician. I'm a housewife. I can't prophesy. The Lord told Amos, go prophesy. And St. Peter tells us this in his first letter. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, you'll probably not be called to share the good news as Billy Graham did in front of 100,000 people, but you can speak God's word to those you know, to those around you, the people you contact. And it's important to continually look for opportunities. And be ready. Again, from St. Peter, always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. And I want to tell you about one of the great failures of my life. It happened uh, when I was in the Air Force. One of my best friends while I was in the Air Force was a man named Larry. And uh, Larry and I met when we were both bachelors. and We had some good times together as Air Force aviators sometimes have good times. And believe me, Air Force aviators who are bachelors have some good times. <laughs> and, and Larry and I kept in touch. Uh, over, over the next 20 years. And then we both retired. Larry to Fort Worth, me to Palestine. We stayed in touch. But Larry was an alcoholic. And he'd been married and divorced twice. And his only friends were the people he drank with in this small, dingy little bar in Fort Worth. And uh, Larry uh, contacted cancer. And uh, it was terminal. And when I would visit him in Fort Worth, I knew I should be telling him the gospel story, the story of salvation. But I didn't. I just would beat around the bush and hint at knowing Jesus and about my going to church. I never directly told him what it, what it means to be saved, what it took to be saved. I'd never heard him speak at all about the church or about Jesus. But I did... Uh, give him a copy of C.S. Lewis, Mere Christianity. Well, Larry died, and I hope, he, I hope and pray that he read that book I gave him, but I should have told him directly, in no uncertain terms, what he needed to do. He needed to, needed to repent and believe. So, I hope that you won't let this happen to you. Don't let it happen to you. When you have the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ, for heaven's sakes, take it. Do it. And don't mince words. Because there are consequences for not accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. It's serious. And I believe the key to all this, the key to successful evangelism, is prayer. Deep attention to God. Feeling the feelings of God. Like from today's psalm, I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their heart to him. And in our New Testament reading, St. Paul thanks God for all the blessings of this life. He says, uh, he's thanking God for our creation, our preservation, and all the blessings of life. But most of all, he's thanking God. God for the glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished upon us. God has revealed to us our destiny. And this is the plan. This is the plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in Jesus Things in heaven, things on earth. That includes us. And that's not just good news. That's great news. News that needs to be shared. Amos was called by God to prophesy, to speak God's word to others, and he did it. So should we. Amen. 
Now please stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, and life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became in heart of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our enemies, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, and justice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. Those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop, Andy, Jeff, Hector, Kay, our bishops, and our parish clergy, David, Matt, Ted, Stephen, Kevin, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in His church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray especially for Dalton, Chris, Jennifer, Drew, Jim, John, Charles, Lisa, Christy, Cynthia, and Nina. You are invited to add your own prayers and petitions. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. You are invited to add your own thanksgivings. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Clark Hampy and Pearl Wells, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, give us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. be seated. A welcome to the service this morning. Great to see all of you on this rainy morning. And listen, uh, we're going to do something this morning we haven't done for a long time. Those who have birthdays and anniversaries can come forward if you'd like to have a, have a blessing. Um, don't everybody run, rush up at once. <laughs> The, uh, the only announcement I want to make is about the men's depth group. Remember, that meets on Wednesday evening at 545 at the South Campus. So um, please join Father Matt this week. It's, uh, they're, they're studying uh, the letter to the Ephesians. So, uh, so that's, that's a great study. So, well, thank you all very much for coming forward. I was really worried. <laughs> And everybody's having a, a, a birthday, correct? <laughs> I just want to make sure. <laughs> oh God, are our, our in your... Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image. With thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him. He in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us our time, Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. 
We humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to move with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, the world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.